All right, friends. In this video, we will look at how identity and access management is taken care in GCP when you are an organization. All right. So, if you look at Google Cloud, you could compare that into two different entities as well. You know, one is Google, which is gives you Google Search, Gmail, Workspace, ML APIs. You have uh, Google Chrome. A lot of these services actually overall form the Google or the Google Cloud at large. Out of this, one of the small component I can say is my GCP, which is the focus of my training series. Now, Google Workspace, it already offers a directory service. You might be familiar with services like uh, uh, Office 365, which is in similar lines, a product offering from Google. Now, since we already have an Active Directory solution or a hosted directory solution, which is a better word for it, available through Google, uh, it made sense for Google to leverage on it. And that is why user management for Google Cloud happens from Google Workspace. Let me walk you through its interface. It's so, so this is admin.google.com okay and uh, this is what looks like once you set up the google cloud workspace solution all your users for corporate consumption would be created over here and managed from here right so this is where you can see all the users now this service is not free you know you would pay per user which are subscribed over here for its directory service along with you know getting in other services like email uh, you know access to google drive uh, another hosted services by Google. Now, since this was not fair, right? So if, if I'm already, you know, paying to Microsoft for its, you know, Office 365 service, and I want to use Google Cloud Form as an enterprise, uh, you know, it's wrong if they force me to, you know, buy both the products. I mean, buy Google Workspace because I want to use Google Cloud. So they came up with a solution uh, that is called cloud identity. Now what cloud identity does is allows you to create users. Rather I can always add in a new user and then decide whether the user is going to have a license or not. If I look at a license, it's part of workspace with active license giving me email, Google Drive and other Google workspace hosted services. Uh, and if I don't put up the license on it, it just becomes a standalone user with no other benefits, right? just a user creation which you can set up a password and you can use with it. Now, along with that, this also allows you to bring in users from your Active Directory. So if you already have a directory service and you want to get the users over here, you can do that. You can set up an SSO. Quite a lot of features are there inside the workspace solution. The user is always outside the project, right? So better way of putting it would be my users are always outside the project. Now, what is the other benefit? Now, the moment you set up the workspace, right, it allows you to access a feature called organization. Organization allows us to create further folders based on our requirements, and folder can have one or more projects in them. So, in this example, you can see I've created an organization and I have two different folders, Mumbai and Hyderabad, both of them having one one project, app A, app B. Now, I can create users and give them access at various levels. Let's say I create a user called um, let's say Sam. Okay, so Sam is going to be the auditor, and he's going to have read-only access to the entire organization. So I can give him an access at the org level. Uh, let's say I have another user. Uh, let's say for example, Alisha. Now Alisha, she is a project admin for Mumbai, and she is the owner of all the assets which are sitting inside Mumbai region. And let's say I have another user called Anish. Okay. And this guy owns the Hyderabad bucket or the Hyderabad folder. All the projects created inside Hyderabad will be under his ownership. Now, for any reason, you know, if I choose to move uh, app A from Mumbai to Hyderabad, right, Alisha will lose an access to this project and Anish will get the access because of the inheritance of the privileges. That's how it would. Let's have a look at this in the interface. Okay, so here we are in the IAM section. If I go on top over here, this is my current project. I can go over here to resource manage resources. 
I can see all my folders and my projects listed over there and I can from here also choose to move the project from one folder to other. So if I'm moving this from Hyderabad to Mumbai, for example, it will get moved. Right. So it is what we covered in this module video was uh, how IAM users are managed for an enterprise. If you have any questions, feel free to put it in the comments. I would love to answer them. If you want to learn more about TCP, kindly subscribe to my channel and my new videos which are released, you will be able to get notification on those. Thank you so much for watching my video. Have a great day.